So good morning brothers and sisters it's an, another wonderful day that the Lord has actually given us and it is actually a gift that heavenly father has extended to us to see yet another day I want to say thank you very much for all of you who are actually following uh, on these uh, videos and listening to uh, some of the discussions that we have to put here online I want to say thank you very much for your support now today, without even wasting time, I would like us just to deal in this topic that says, is the Bible really complete? Okay, this has been a debate uh, in so many organizations. And I remember at one time, uh, was it two, three days ago, I, I met with one of my Muslim friends. And he was speaking a lot of things about uh, Christianity, which I think... In, uh, at the end of our, our, our discussion, he ended up actually respecting what Christianity is all about. And, and, and I think the Lord helped me actually to give him uh, some nice, wonderful sense that gave him another dimension of what he was actually thinking. And, and, and that is the grace of God. That is the grace of God. Now, today I want us just to delve into a topic that uh, most of the people always discuss about it and i know it's a very hot topic especially in kenya and in the world as large that people are now asking themselves is the bible really complete okay is the bible really complete and um there was one time i was going through uh, uh internet and i found out that there were some other activists okay who were arguing that the bible is full of hate speech that is what they were arguing and i don't understand why they will say that and then some of them also are also arguing and saying that the bible actually was so much you know it was actually it is it is demeaning and it was actually it is actually you know uh, not giving consent to feminism uh, and that is that is actually a debate uh, that is, is is really rampant and it's very, really rampant in the world. I do not want to delve into that. When that time comes, I will be able to delve into But the topic today that I want to focus on is, is the Bible really complete? Okay. Now, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is that uh, as per the translations and as, as per the articles of faith that the Lord, that Joseph Smith uh, uh, I wrote those are 13 articles you remember what i shared some other time is that we believe in the bible as far as it is translated correctly and that is what most members of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints believe in we know it is the word of god okay and it is also a witness of god and his son jesus christ now members of the church are encouraged to study the bible and follow the teachings that are actually in the bible and the church uses many translations of the Bible in various languages. Okay, In English, the King James Version is used as the official Bible of the church. Uh, and that is what it is. We've stuck with King James Version. And, and that is what a lot of members of the church who are in the English-speaking uh, nations, they are encouraged to actually stick with King James Version. Reasons best known to us and i think also with the reasons i explained to the video that i spoke of uh, the articles of faith i i explained there very detailed so the bible is not god's final revelation and this will be a shock okay to most christians that belong to other churches that who may actually be listening to me right now that as members of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints we do know that the Bible is not God's final revelation to humanity. But however, and neither is this collection of sacred writings complete. Okay? It is not complete. And when you read the Bible or you read the history of the Bible, you will end up realizing that even the word the Bible itself, it is a Greek word, which means Biblos. It is a library of books. Okay? And it is, it is a library of books. Now, there are so many contents within the Bibles as, as at that time because what the Romans gave to the world was a content of 66 books, okay? But even today, we realize that there are so many other books now are coming up and they've been added in. There are other, other, other congregations that deal or they are reading a Bible that has over 78 books in it. But what was given to us in the mainstream was actually 66 
uh, uh, content of the Bible. And that is why you realize that uh, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we know that the Bible is a sacred uh, a book or a compilation of sacred writings, but which are not complete. As a Bible itself, it's still not, not actually complete. Okay, The Bible itself you know, speaks of other authoritative books of Scripture, including uh, books of Nathan, the prophet, and of Jehu, and Enoch, the prophets of Hijah, the visions of Ido, and the seer, and even missing epistles of Paul. Okay, it is actually identifying there that there was there are these books that were written, but they are not part part and parcel of the Bible. Now let's just delve in a little bit. Now, when you read in the book of Second Chronicles, let us just uh, uh, read this. When you read in the book of Second Chronicles, uh, this is the Old Testament. Eh? Okay, that is the Old Testament in the Bible. That is the book of Second Chronicles. If I read in chapter nine, okay. Uh, verse 29, listen to what it says. Eh? Chapter 9, verse 29, this is what it says. Eh? Okay, this is what it says. Eh? That now the rest of the acts of Solomon, first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan, okay, the prophet, and in the prophecy of Ahijah, the Shilonite, and in the visions of Ido, the seer, against Jeroboam and the sons of Nebat. Now, this is the, the book of Second Chronicles in the Bible, but it is referring to other books that were actually not part and parcel, that are not part and parcel of the Bible. That is the book of Nathan, okay, the book of Ahijah, the book of Shilonite, and the book of Ido. And Ido was a seer, okay, uh, and they were speaking against Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Now, these books are not actually in the Bible, okay? They are not in the Bible, okay? Now, when you read again in the same, same book of Second Chronicles, if I go to chapter 13, if I go to chapter 13, verse 22, read Second uh, Chronicles chapter 13, verse 22, and this is what it says, And the rest of the acts of Abijah and his ways and his sayings are written, in the story of the prophet Edo. Okay? Now, where is the, where is the writings of the prophet Edo in the Bible? Where, where is the writings of the prophet Edo in the Bible? And this is what the book of Chronicles is attesting, is revealing that there were some other books that were written which were not actually, you know, part and parcel of the Bible. Okay? Now, let's continue. If I read again the same, same, okay, uh, book, Second Chronicles, that is in chapter 9. Let me, let me read chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and then I will read verse 34. Uh, in verse 34, uh, listen to what it says here. This is what it says. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Jehu, the son of Hanani, who is mentioned in the book of the kings of Israel. Where is the book of Jehu? Okay, where is the book of Jehu? Okay, so you realize even at the same time is that the revelations of God cannot only be cannot actually be limited uh, to the Bible alone because within the Bible itself and th there are so many other areas in which uh, these things are attested to, but. But from what the book of Second Chronicles is revealing, you realize that there are so many books that were written which were not actually uh, uh, included in the Bible. Uh, and, and this is actually the writings as per what the children of Israel were actually writing. Okay? Now somebody will say these are Mormons or these are, these are Mormon Bible. I would want you to refer to your own Bible. Go read in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 9, verse 29, chapter 13, verse 22, chapter 20, verse 34. Okay? You will find those books being mentioned there. Now, without even uh, wasting time, let's go back to the New Testament. Okay? Let's go back to the New Testament. Okay? When you go to the New Testament again, there are other things that are being mentioned there. Now, if we read in the book of First. Uh, First Corinthians, okay, when you read in the book of First Corinthians here, 
Uh, I will read chapter 5 of the first Corinthians verse 9. Okay? First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 9 and this is what I said. This is what Paul is saying. Okay? That I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company in an epistle. Okay? I wrote unto you in an epistle. Now what, what does it actually what, what what really comes at your mind? Now what we are reading here, we are reading the book of First Corinthians. But when you read in verse 9 of the book of First Corinthians chapter 5, this is what Paul is saying that he had written one of the epistles to them not to accompany with fornicators. Which means even the book of First Corinthians, the epistle that is the letter, the First Corinthians is not actually the First Corinthians. Because Paul is saying he had written one of the epistles to them. Okay? So in other words, the first Corinthians should be second Corinthians. Okay? So you find that Paul himself is referring to one of his letters that he had written earlier before even writing uh, the first Corinthians to, to the people of Corinth. Okay? Now when again, if I read in the book of Jude, okay, if I read again, you go, same New Testament, you read the book of Jude here. We just read the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 14. I'll read chapter 1, verse 14, that says, this is what the book of Jude says. And this is New Testament. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of this saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with the ten thousands of his saints. Okay? With ten thousand of his saints. Okay? To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have actually spoken against him. Now this is Jude actually testifying of Enoch. Okay? He is quoting actually Enoch. Okay? He is quoting Enoch and from the from the book of uh, Second Chronicles, we, we, we heard that uh, Enoch also wrote from his book. And this is an apostle from the New Testament quoting from the book of Enoch and how Enoch actually prophesied uh, and, and how actually Enoch actually uh, prophesied uh, about the coming of the Lord. So you can see when you read the Bible, you realize that there are so many other books that are being mentioned within the Bible itself, which they are not part and parcel of the Bible, okay, that other prophets were in fact quoting from those books and they were attesting of what those writers in those books, like prophets like Enoch, the prophets like Hijah, the prophets like Jehu, the prophet like Nathan, okay, and I think Nathan to most of the Christians, most of the Christian churches, Nathan is a very common prophet. Okay, and these prophets are being quoted by other prophets in the Bible, which they wrote, uh, they wrote uh, their their books, but those books were not part and parcel of the Bible. Now, does it mean if those books were not part and parcel of the Bible, does it mean what they wrote was not a revelation? Okay, does it mean what they wrote was not actually a revelation? Okay, it it was, it was. So we cannot limit the revelations of God just from the 66 books that were given to us from the Romans. Okay? Now, other books of Latter-day Saints scripture, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price clarify, clarify the gospel as taught in the Bible and corroborate the truthfulness of the biblical witness of Jesus Christ. Okay? Those other books are attesting to the truthfulness uh, of Christ and his divinity. And that is why we as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we do not actually say or concur that the Bible is complete and that the Bible has all the revelations that Christians today need to have. It is not. Now, when you read in the book of John, this is what John is also saying here. Okay? And when I say John, I speak of the book of St. John. Okay? St. John. And this is what John is saying. Uh, in the book of John, chapter 21, I will read, uh, uh, <clears throat> read from verse, uh, verse 25. 
And this is what it says. Eh? John is saying this, that and there are also many other things which Jesus did, them which, if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself will not contain the books that should be written. Okay? So he's saying there are so many other things that Jesus Christ did, which even uh, uh, if, the, if those books could be written, then the world could not contain the books thereof. The world could not contain the books thereof. Now what exactly is John telling us here? John is telling us that what even is written, it is still not complete. What, that is, what is being written, or what was written, it is not all that Jesus Christ actually, actually did. And that is why we concur based on what the Bible has revealed that the Bible it's not actually complete. It does not actually give us full revelations of what Heavenly Father will actually uh, has revealed today. It is not complete. And that's why sometimes I wonder why most Christians will just cling when you give them uh, things that are very genuine, uh, they will just cling, is it in the Bible? Is it in the Bible? Is it in the Bible? But one thing is that they don't understand that there are so many books that were written. Okay? And some of them, from what we've just read from the Bible, and even there are some which have been included in other Bibles. Like when you look at the book of Maccabees, it has been included in other Bibles. But the mainstream Bible which came from Rome uh, uh, with the equivalence of six, six books actually it does not include the book of Maccabees but there are books that the orthodox uh, the orthodox uh, people are reading and even their what we call the Jerusalem Bible it has uh, 78 books in it and you realize that there are books uh, which were not part and parcel of what the Romans had included in the Bible actually right now they are being recognized which in some years back they were being known they were being called as apocryphal books but now people have started now realizing actually these were books that were written by inspired men men of god and they were testifying of the coming of the lord jesus christ just like the way the book of mormon that has 15 prophets in it and each prophet testified of the coming of christ and when you look at even the book of Paul of Great Price, those writings that were written by both Abraham and, 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 and Moses, okay, they testified of how the beginning of the universe started relative to what also the book of Genesis is saying and also the noble spirits of our Heavenly Father that were actually chosen before even uh, the universe was created. Okay? It speaks of the pre-existence of life. And that is one of the major essence and greater revelations that members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints today, they know that we actually existed with our Heavenly Father before we were born here on earth. And that is relative to what the revelations that Abraham himself received. Okay? Abraham himself received. Okay? And Abraham was shown a lot of very mighty things by Heavenly Father. And he wrote those scriptures. He wrote those scriptures, which were finally in the years later, they were revealed to the prophet Joseph Smith. And these were just writings. Somebody was just having them. And this person was just selling them. The, he didn't even know what exactly those writings were all about. To him, he just saw were ancient writings. And, uh, and uh, he was just doing business of actually selling these ancient writings. And that is why when the prophet, com when, when the Lord commanded the prophet Joseph Smith to go buy those writings, and the prophet bought them very expensively because these guys sold them very expensively. And that is why they are called the pearl of great price. Because it is a pearl, something very precious. But the prophet had to buy it very expensively to get those writings, which the Lord himself actually commanded him to, to get those writings. Okay. I know there are so many other interpretations that people will bring relative to what the studies they've studied today about Egyptology. But one thing is that the Lord can take any concept or any symbol in the world relative to what it is and actually teach his own children uh, relative to what him as the Lord really understands. 
Okay, and that's why there are a lot of people will come and say that uh, some of the writings that were depicted there actually do, it does not actually give an interpretation uh, the way the Egyptians used to uh, the Egyptians used to interpret it. Yes, we may have different interpretations. We may have different interpretations, but the Lord's interpretation is the final one. Okay, relative to what Heavenly Father requires of you and what Joseph Smith taught and what he revealed to the saints, it is exactly what the Lord told him to reveal and it is exactly what the Lord told him to actually teach uh, 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 his children today. Okay, so that is, that is what it is. So we cannot actually say that we limit the revelations of God through a Bible only. Okay, that one will not actually be uh, we will not actually be doing any justice even to the Bible itself. And I'd like us just to read one of the revelations that in the book of Revelations that says that uh, uh, in the book of Revelation, I think it is in chapter 21, okay, uh, where, where it says, is it in chapter 21? Okay. Where it says that uh, one, like if you subtract from this, okay, your punishment also will be, uh, you, you will be subtracted and all that stuff. Thou shalt not add, okay? And this is the book of Revelation, whereby, okay, that is in verse 29, that is the book of Revelation chapter 22, verse 29. And this is what John the Revelator received relative to the book of Revelation. And it says, and if any man shall take away from the words of the book, of this prophecy okay not the bible it is the words of this prophecy that is the book of revelation itself god shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book okay and you see that and he which testifieth these things saith surely i come quickly amen even so come the lord jesus Okay, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And that was the end of the book of Revelation. So when John the Revelator was writing this, speaking of whoever shall take away from the words of this book, that is the books of Revelation, also the, 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 shall take away his name also, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. It never meant that it is the entire Bible. Okay, because by definition, as I said earlier, the Bible is a library of books. It's a collection of book, books. When John the Revelator was writing the book of Revelation in the island of Patmos, Mark was not there to see what John the Revelator was writing. Mark was writing his own gospel in another area. Okay, look the same way he was writing his own book differently in another area. And likewise, also Matthew was writing his own book differently. None of the disciples were there to see who was written, what was written, what was written. Each one of them was writing their books separately. And when you read, uh, some of the scholars of religion, they say that each one of them, when he was writing, they were targeting a specific audience uh, in, their, in their writings. Okay, Like Luke was actually targeting the, the Gentiles. He was targeting the Greeks. Because remember, Luke was a Gentile, and he was targeting the Greek people. Okay, and when he is writing, he's actually showing all the wisdom because the Greeks were actually governed by education and wisdom. And Luke is vindicating the wisdom and the intelligence that Jesus Christ had just to bring the Greeks to accept who actually Christ was and all that. So these were books that were written by different uh, uh, people, targeting different audiences but in different areas. Are you seeing? But now you look at when John was writing there, Mark was not there. Mark was also writing his own books. By then, the Bible did not exist. Only the books of the gospel existed. But who abridged all these books together? Okay? Who abridged all these books together? Likewise, also we look at the Old Testament. The book of Genesis was a book on its own when Moses was writing it. The book of Exodus was a book on its own. And when Moses was writing both Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, all the Torahs, he wrote them as different books. He did not write them as a collective of a Bible. He wrote them as different books. Okay? Likewise, when Jeremiah was writing the book of Jeremiah, who was actually the scribe of Jeremiah, 
somebody called Baruch, who was the scribe. Jeremiah will speak and Baruch will write. Likewise, also in the book of Lamentation, these were separate books. Okay? These were separate books. But they were bridged together to form just one book, which was Biblus, or it is a library of books. And within that, okay, Moses spoke something when you read in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4. Let's just read that. And this was way back before even the book of Revelation was written. And this is what Moses said. Okay? If I read in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, if you read the book of Deuteronomy, that is in the Old Testament, uh, these are the Torahs. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, uh, this is uh, this is what uh, Moses also spoke. Okay, in verse two it says, "Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you." So you realize Moses spoke the same same thing that it's being revealed in the book of Revelation. Uh, chapter 22 that ye shall not add or subtract anything from the from this book in other words from the revelations of god and moses here is saying the same way that no one is supposed to add anything from the commandments that the lord has given has given them are you saying now when you read or you take it as a concept of books okay will you want to tell me now that the new testament was actually an addition of the old testament Okay, because if we start arguing about books or we start arguing about the Bible itself, we know the Bible itself has two uh, volumes of sins or two volumes of seasons. There is the old season and there is the new season, the New Testament and the Old Testament. But Moses spoke this in the Old Testament that this should not be added. Now, if you take it literally that Moses was speaking of the books, then it means the New Testament was actually. Uh, 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 broke the law of what the Old Testament was saying because no any other book or no any other commandment was supposed to be added in the Old Testament because that is what Moses said. Now this this one I'm explaining relative to the interpretations people have outside there that since we have a Bible we do not need any other Bibles, okay? And when you bring the Book of Mormon, it are you adding from what the Lord actually cautioned us? You know, so we stick only with the Bible and the Bible alone. They are failing to understand that just like Moses told the children of Israel, that they are not supposed to add any commandment apart from what the Lord had revealed to them. And it is likewise also John is saying, is being told that no one is supposed to subtract or add anything on the revelations that the Lord has actually revealed. That is what it means. It is not about books. Okay? It is not about books. It is what exactly the Lord, what the Lord actually revealed. And this is what we are seeing here today. Okay? Now, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we know that the Bible is the Word of God. But actually, we cannot... It's the Word of God. But actually, it is not God's final revelation to humanity. That is where we differ with people. It is not actually the final revelation to humanity. The final, God's final revelation to humanity. Okay? But however, and neither is this collection of sacred writings, that is the Bible, complete. It is not from what we've just read that other prophets and other books in the Bible are referring to other books that are not actually part and parcel of the Bible. Uh, and that is why we as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we believe all that God has revealed and all that God is, is yet to reveal and all that he will reveal. Okay? That is what we, we know. Let me just read for you as I conclude here in the, in the Articles of Faith. Yeah? This, is, this is in the Articles of Faith. Okay? And this is what it says. As I conclude, okay, it says this, okay, and as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, okay, we believe in being honest, true, chaste, benevolent, virtuous, and in doing good to all men. Indeed, we may say 
that we follow the admonitions of Paul. Okay? We believe all things. We hope all things. We have endured many things and hope to be able to endure all things if there is anything virtuous, lovely, okay? Or if good report or praiseworthy, we seek after these things. Okay? We seek after these uh, things. Okay? Secondly, permit me just to quote for you again that we claim the privilege of worshipping Almighty God according to the dictates of our own conscience and allow all men the same privilege. Let them worship how, where, or what they may. Okay? That is also one wonderful thing. And lastly, that we believe all that God has revealed, all that he does now reveal, he does now reveal, and we believe that he will yet reveal many great and important things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So God's revelations cannot only be limited to 66 books in the Bible. God's revelations cannot be limited there. Even though those are sacred writings that we do believe in. They are roadmaps that are good for edification and for actually, you know, salvation. But there are many things that Heavenly Father will still reveal in our time relative to our generations. And those that He's going to reveal and those that He has already revealed and those that He will reveal in future, we believe in everything. And that is the stand of the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I know, my brothers and sisters, this is very true, and this is what actually Heavenly Father has revealed in our time. And I know, if we follow His Spirit, and we follow His counsels, then definitely He will constantly continue to lead us in the right ways and in the things that He requires of us. And I pray that we remain steadfast in following what Heavenly Father has actually revealed and listening to the counsels of his prophets today that as they counsel with the Lord and they direct us in the things that we need to do that we should always be willing to follow what the Spirit of God will reveal to us. And I so say this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, I'm so much very grateful for you having taken time to go through this and I pray that uh, uh, if you are led by the Spirit also, please, I would like to know your comments and I would like to know how you are feeling by just putting uh, your comments down there. And for those uh, who, who are uh, still, if they have not subscribed, I'm, I'm still seeking also for your support that you may actually subscribe to this channel. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel so that YouTube will constantly continue to remind you when we upload new videos here and there. We'll also like you to put a thumbs up there so that we know that how many people have reacted to this video and how the how many people are being edified uh, when listening to this video otherwise uh, thank you very much please remember you subscribe and please hit a thumbs up there i would really appreciate and i'm seeking for your support thank you very much uh, god bless you have a victorious week